It's so good to see you today. Thank you for being with us at Vivid Church at Home. We're going to have a, a fantastic time. You know, it's a new year, and I think for a lot of people, they're feeling like, well, it's a new year, but nothing's really changed. That's just a mindset. Let's shift our mindset. This is a new year. We're taking on new challenges. I wonder right now, how many people you have a goal this year or a, a resolution that you're trying to attain? Why don't you take a moment, throw that in the chat. We're cheering you on and believing for it. And there might be some of you who say, I'm 10 days into the year and I already feel like I've failed on that goal or resolution. Don't worry. You still have 355 more days. Get back on that keep going for it. I think there's too many people who when they falter, they just give up. So we're going to keep on pushing, keep on going. What's your resolution this year? Yeah, it's so exciting. I mean, getting to make goals and mm -hmm. it's exciting to hear people's goals, what they want to do, you know, things they want to do better, things that they themselves feel like, hey, I could be better yeah, yeah. at this. You know, it's really exciting and I just, I love this, like a fresh start and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. And I just, I always think this time of year, I think to Mark 14, there's this mm. amazing story and this woman, she comes to Jesus. Now Jesus is just having dinner yeah. with some friends and she comes and it says this, it says, um, she comes in with an alabaster jar, mm. a very expensive perfume made of pure nard and she broke the jar and she poured the perfume on his head. And then the people at the table, they all start complaining because they're like, well, that's so wasteful because it was really expensive. And yep. they're complaining and they actually rebuke the woman and they rebuke her harshly. And then Jesus, he says this, he says, leave her alone. Mm. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me, a mm. beautiful thing to me. How extravagant her love yeah. was. The others were kind of like, why did you do that? But she wanted to do something extravagant mm. to show how much she loved her savior. Yeah. And then he says at the end, he says, truly I tell you that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Mm. And I just think that's so exciting. You know, our goals are so great. If we want to, you know, get in shape or eat better, those things are amazing. Yeah. But above all of it, yeah. let's be people who are known for being extravagantly in love with our Savior, that we are trying to find ways to like lavish our love wow. on Him. So let's be known as those people. And those other goals, yeah, let's you know be disciplined and, and stick with it. But let's love our Savior. Let's hmm. pour our love on Him. And Jesus, in the midst of it, he says, you know, she did what she could. So let's wow. be those people that, let's do what we yep. can do to show our love to our Savior. Mm, yeah, don't feel like you are disqualified in some way. Just do what you can. And what you can do right now is enter into worship with us. We're about to worship, and this would be a moment where you can turn your heart toward heaven, turn your heart toward Jesus, and express your love in response to His love for you. So why don't we do that together? Seated 
beautiful among us. We might not be able to gather together all together, but Father, you are a great God. You are a big God, and we know that we are united together in you. So we just pray for beautiful things to happen. Thank you for this new year. I pray for any needs. I pray for sickness. I pray for healing over sickness. I pray for people who are feeling financially um, stressed out. I just pray for provision. And God, for any other need, we just lift it up to you and ask for miracles to happen, Lord God. Thank you that you are a God of miracles. Mm. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. 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 All right. This is exciting. It's a new year. It is. And we're back at things. We've got great things in store. Uh, we have hubs again this week, right? That's true. We're yep. back to hubs. So back Thursday at it night. this Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. We are excited to be going to this year strong. You know, the, the Bible often talks about firsts with some significance. Like the way we honor God is by putting God first. And that means both first in sequence and first in priority. Yes, certainly God is above all and there's no one beside him or above him. But it also means first in sequence where we say before other things, I'm going to prioritize God. I know many of you have taken this season to say, God, you're first in my life. The first of my year I'm giving to you. you know, I know some of you are engaging every day in prayer, every day in devotion, maybe with a new vigor. And I think that's a beautiful thing to see every day. At noon, we've been on IG Live, just taking a moment to pray together. These disciplines are going to help us this year have what I believe is going to be our greatest year. And uh, when it comes to firsts, that's one of the reasons why whenever we gather, we give people an opportunity to give. It's a reminder to put God first. Let's not be those people who wait and see how the year plays out and then say, here's how much I've left for God. Let's not be those people who wait and see how our, our financial month plays out and then see how much we have left to be generous. But if we truly want to have that heart after God, that generous heart, generous spirit, then we prioritize generosity in our budget. And so I, I want to commend so many of you who are part of this church. And, and truly, without you, I don't know how God funds the church. He, he like All churches are funded by the hearts of people being stirred towards a common mission. So thank you for your faithfulness and giving. And I want to commend you and remind you, let's all be those people who the first of the year, at the beginning of the year, we're saying we believe in faith that God has big things in store. And so as you give today, I want to ask you to do it with a whole bunch of faith. In fact, why don't we do it with a whole bunch of joy and cheerfulness? The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And so in the, in the chat section right now, you'll see a link that you can give. You could give any other time online as well. You can also give by an e-transfer to info at vivid.church. We want to serve you as you put that priority first. Can we pray together? Let's believe. Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to give with joy and cheerfulness, with gladness in our heart. I pray for faith to stir up in us today that we wouldn't be fearful, we wouldn't be anxious about the days to come, but instead we would be positioning ourselves to receive from you everything you have in store. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Hey, before I speak, and I, I got an exciting message to share, I wanted to tell you next week is a special week. Next Sunday, we have a guest speaker. His name is Dr. Aaron Kerr from Toronto. And uh, man, he it's a, it's a great message. You're gonna love this message. And also next week, ready? We have probably one of the Biggest announcements we've made in a long time. It's big news, and we would love for you to be there. And uh, I, I don't think I could overhype it. So you're just <laughs> going to have to trust me. Got to make sure you're in church next week. You're logged on LinkedIn and ready for all this. It's going to be great. So that's next Sunday. But right now, we're going to dive into the Word. Have you ever found yourself in a conversation, and your immediate thought is, how fast can I get out of this conversation? Like somebody's telling you a story that you have no interest in and so you're trying to be kind and you're trying to be engaged but you're just sort of nodding along and hoping the, the theme might change. Maybe, maybe you found yourself in like a very detailed birth story and you're going, I actually, I just want to see the baby. I didn't need to hear all of the, the details. Maybe you find yourself, you know, sitting with someone who's passionate about a sport and you go, oh, that was a great play. And then they give you the play-by-play -play of that athlete's entire life. Or maybe, you know, somebody is excited about a, a new project, new business, new idea, and it just doesn't click with you. Or perhaps you've been on the other side. You're the one talking. You're the one engaging in conversation. And, and you can tell that the other person is thinking, I'm already done with this topic. I remember times like getting back from a missions trip and people go, oh, how was your trip? I'm like, oh. It was great. And right around that point is when you see people zone out. They're like, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's awesome. And, and you think, oh, all this impacting stuff happened in my life, but I'll just make this fast. In fact, today, if you are taking notes, I want you to write down that as our title. Make this fast. You know, lately, one of the things that, that might have spurred you on to feel like, can we just keep it moving along? Or maybe you've been on the talking end and you've seen people's eyes glaze over as they just want to move it on is this concept of intermittent fasting. Have you ever been in an intermittent fasting conversation? 
Now there's two types of people, those who like that conversation and those who simply just don't care. And the ones that like it, they can talk ketones all day and then the hours and the way they do things and the ones who don't care, just don't care. And so as they're listening, they're going, come on, make this fast. And as the person's speaking, they start to clue in, hopefully, that I gotta make this fast. Well today, I wanna talk to you about, about fasting. Not intermittent fasting, but fasting in prayer. I wanna I want share some thoughts from scripture on fasting. And I know, I know, I know, there's probably two types of people when it comes to spiritual fasts as well. There's those who care, and those who simply don't. Well today, my hope is this, that for those of us who care, that we will find ourselves encouraged, strengthened in our resolve. And for those who maybe presently don't care, perhaps by the time this message is over, your heart would be opened and softened just a little bit to the concept of fasting. Can I pray with you? And then we're gonna dive in. Jesus, I pray right now for every person who's a part of Vivid Church, every person who's connected right now. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts, use your word to do so. We submit ourselves to it right now in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Amen. We're talking fasting today. Now, I don't know if you've ever fasted before, but essentially fasting is this. It is saying no to things that we want but don't really need so we can say yes to things that we really need even if we don't necessarily want. Let me explain it a little bit. Probably the most basic way that people fast is they, they don't eat food or they say no to a certain type of food. Some might have practiced this in a season referred to as Lent. Uh, some might have practiced this you know, in some season of their life where they're trying to grow spiritually. In fact, right now, through this early part of 2021, I'm actually in the middle uh, of a fast as I wanna start this year with spiritual focus. I wanna say no to something that I, I really want, which is food so that I can say yes to something that I really need, which is focus. I wanna focus in on what God has for me this year. Let me give you a few scriptures to kind of lay a, a base work for fasting. And I know for some, you're already going, Pastor Justin, just make this fast. I, I get it. It's not the most comfortable conversation to speak about, but I think there's a lot of power in it. And if we could grab hold of it today, it really might change the world around us. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and uh, verse 31. Jesus is speaking and he says this, Do not worry, saying, What will I eat? Or what will I drink? Or what will I wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. I, I want to tell you one of the things that takes place when, when I fast is I have eliminated one of the things that I think about a lot, like what is my next meal? Are you with me? How many people you think that way? You're like, ooh, what am I gonna have tonight? Oh, what am I gonna have next? And, and, and you find yourself constantly thinking about that. By eliminating food for a season, what you do is you open up your heart and mind and time and care, and you're saying, instead of just giving my attention and my care to so many other things, I wanna be focused in this season. You know, fasting, it doesn't have to require food, but I do think it has to require the things that we want but don't really need. For a season, you can do without food. You can do without certain foods. Maybe for you, fasting is, I'm gonna do without sugar for a little while. Maybe for you, fasting is, I'm gonna do without streaming any television for a little while. Maybe for you, fasting is, I'm gonna do without Instagram for a little while. Or I'm gonna put TikTok aside for a little bit and I'm gonna give the time and the energy and the, the, the resource that I was giving to that towards focusing in on prayer. Check out what it says in the book of Mark, chapter 14. I love this right now. Mark chapter 14 and verse 36. Mark 14 and verse 36. Jesus is praying. He says, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not that I will, but what you will. I love the example we have of Jesus. This is moments before he would be taken to the cross, moments before he would experience something he had no desire to. And even in the worst of times, he was saying, God, my father, my dad, Abba even goes so far as him, him calling God the father, daddy. It's very intimate, very personal. He's saying, dad, I don't want what I want. I actually want what you want. Do you know what, when you and I fast, we are making, on a very micro level, that statement, God, I actually want what you want more than I want what I want. I agree with you when you say I need 
focus. I need to understand you. I need to know you and I need to hear from you. I agree with you. And so I'm saying no to what I want in order to engage in what I need. Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Galatians. Again, this is all just kind of foundational thoughts. And then I want to share a few uh, aspects about fasting that I think are going to be really helpful for you today. Uh, book of Galatians chapter 5, if you could read this with me. Book of Galatians chapter 5. Are you still with me? Verse 16, Paul says this, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of of the flesh for the the flesh desires what's contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that they are not uh you are not to do whatever you want but if you are led by the spirit you're not under the law now in in this paul is saying this there's an ongoing conflict that takes place between what i want and what i need do you find that to be true in your life in fact i, I believe that the, there's three sort of forces that play into how each of us live our lives. We have our, our, our emotions, our desires, our feelings, all the, this aspect of us. We have our convictions, and then we have our actions. And if you're anything like me, my emotions and my convictions are often at war with one another. What I want to do and what I know to be right are two opposite things. Have you ever been there? I don't want to forgive someone who's wronged me, but I'm under the conviction that Forgiveness is the only way to live in freedom. And there's this constant tug between my wants and my convictions. Well, guess what? The swing vote in your life becomes your action. What you choose to put action towards actually brings the other along because we can't live in cognitive dissonance forever. So if we choose to act upon our feelings only, our convictions begin to follow. We say, I don't want to forgive. I know I should, but I'm not going to. And after a while, we begin to convince ourselves that the conviction was just wrong because we don't want to live in cognitive dissonance, not doing the thing we know to do. So we say, you know what? They didn't deserve my forgiveness anyway. Well, the same is kind of true when we fast. I am training my, my body to be subservient to my spirit. I am saying I am not just led by my flesh. Before we go any farther, is food bad? Absolutely not. I think it's one of the greatest blessings in all God's creation. Is certain types of food bad? No. The Bible would teach that there's really, there's nothing taboo. It is to eat in moderation, of course, not to live in gluttony. But guess what? Food is something that we're thinking about and, and, and working around all the time. And God says for a season, why don't you just put that aside and instead give me that time. So I want to challenge you. This year, make this fast. Maybe even to begin this year, let's make a fast. Make a determination. And because this, here in Galatians, it says, walk according to the Spirit and you're not under the law. This is not some rule. I'm not putting out a legislation, you know, from the, the office of Vivid Church. If you're part of this church, you must fast. No, 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 no. But I think there would be some incredible freedom in your life if you would say for a season, I'm going to say no to what I want because I want to say yes to what God wants in my life, the thing that I really need. Now, maybe for you that looks like I'm going to take one meal this week and instead of having lunch that one time, I'm going to, I'm going to give that time to prayer. Maybe for you that looks like, you know what, I am going to just not watch TV this week. And instead of watching TV, the time I would normally give to, to just consuming information, I'm going to lay my heart out before the, the Lord and I'm going to pray. Maybe for some, it would be, uh, you know, a certain activity. Maybe, maybe it's coffee, but careful with that one because uh, you're not looking to punish the people in your life, the people around you. But let's make a decision and a determination to say no to something we want so that we can say yes to God. To say no to something we want because we're saying, God, it's not my will. It's actually your will in my life. That there's something good about delaying gratification. There's something good for us about saying no, not now, but later. Are you following with me? I, I, wanna, I wanna share with you four things, four things that uh, fasting is and that fasting is not. I think this will help you. And for those who really weren't interested in this, I hope you're still with me because you might've just said, oh, I'm not a fasting type of person because of a misconception you have about fasting. I think when we're done, these four points, you might agree with me that you are the type of person who is all for fasting. 
Now, now, first of all, I'd like to propose that the word fasting is just simply the wrong word because there's nothing that feels fast about it. It feels slow. Here I am on day 10 fasting and, and there's a few different ways that you can fast. You could go just water. Uh, you can go what, what I'm now doing for the second part of my fast is called the Daniel fast, which is just fruits and vegetables. Now, some of you go like, oh, that sounds amazing. For me, I'm saying no to some things I, I want for the things I need. Again, we talked about social media fasts, talk about any sort of activity that you could lay aside. But let me tell you four things that fasting is and four things that fasting is not. Man, it's super practical this week. Okay, here we go. Number one, fasting is not dieting, it's dying to self. I hear a lot of people, it's like they, they, they go, you know what, the end result of this fast is that I will lose a few pounds. So it's worth the pain because I gotta lose the pounds. Guess what? Fasting is not a weight loss program. Fasting is, is not the newest, latest, greatest. That's why this is not about intermittent fasting. This is not about healthy lifestyle decisions. This is a spiritual act. It's a dying to self. Look what the Bible says here in Matthew chapter six. We're gonna go back to Matthew chapter six, but if you could go with me to, uh, to verse 16. Matthew chapter six and verse 16. Jesus is saying this, when you fast, I love that he's just presuming of people, of course you fast. Now in that culture and time, this was an obvious. In that culture and time, this was a, a given of, well, of course you fast. It was part of the rule. It was part of the regulation of the way they lived their life. But even within the confines of a rule-oriented system, Jesus says this, when you fast, don't look somber as the hypocrites do for they disfigure their face and they show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, you've received your reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Check it out. Fasting is not about a diet. Fasting is not about proving to yourself or the people around you that you're really getting in shape. Fasting is not about the compliments you might receive. You're looking good. Well, you know, fasting and praying. Fasting is actually more about the pray part than about the fast part. It's more about the dying to self part. And so Jesus says, guys, don't cash in your reward in heaven for a mere compliment on earth. And so in that time, there was people just kind of dragging around, trudging through life going, oh, you know, I, I'm fasting right now. Woe is me. Guess what? If you're fasting right now and someone near you eats food, don't make them apologize for eating food. They should, because guess what? There's also something called feasting in prayer, and I'm down with that as well. Fasting is not dieting. It's dying to self. And I don't know about you, but, but myself needs a little bit more death sometimes. There are times in, in, in life, there are seasons in life, and, and probably on a more regular basis than I would be comfortable with, where I have to remind myself, remind my flesh, it's no longer I that lives, it's Jesus that's living in me. So when we fast, we die to self, we're not just dieting. Number two, second thing I wanna say is fasting is not a formula, it's formation. Fasting is not about a certain formula. If I fast three days, I receive from God, this type of outcome. Fasting is not a, a calculation. You can punch in how many calories you're willing to do without, how many shows you didn't watch, and then therefore I can take a withdrawal from God. Fasting is not a formula. It's actually a formation. Look what it says in, in Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17 and, uh, and verse 12. Matthew 17 verse 12, there's this story where uh, someone is demonized and they're brought to the disciples and the disciples are trying to, to help this person be set free from the, the demons that are dominating their life and, and they're just super unsuccessful. They try, they try to do the things they saw Jesus doing. They're trying to follow in the formula. They're going, I know Jesus usually reaches out his hand or he touches them or he says something and I'm trying to do this formula and whatever they tried just didn't work. Um, uh, Matthew chapter 17, uh, verse 21. Uh, I, I'll go one back so that you get it. Verse 19, the disciples came to Jesus in private and they said, why couldn't we drive that demon out? Because guess what? Jesus walked up and just made it happen. He said, hey, be quiet enough. You need to go. And the person was completely set free. The disciples are looking at it just confounded. They go, wait, we did the same formula. Why didn't it work? And Jesus' answer to them is this. 
because you just have little faith. And, in, and he's not speaking of small in size, he's speaking in small in duration. He goes, your faith is short term. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move to the mountain move. And it will move from here to there and it will move. Nothing is impossible for you. In this very same story, Jesus says to them, oh, well, it's just because some, some issues of prayer and, uh, and deliverance actually require fasting and prayer. See, what fasting and prayer does for us is form a longer term faith. Like to say, you know what, I'm going to fast my next bite of ice cream. I'm just going to say no to this bite of ice cream and pray. Well, good for you for praying, but that's not really a fast. When you fast, you're pushing yourself a little farther than feels comfortable because you're growing and forming and developing some faith. Jesus says to them, well, you can't understand deliverance ministry or, or walking in faith and freedom as simply a function of formula. It's about being formed. When we fast, we are engaging in formation. And uh, I can prove that to you. Look at the book of Matthew chapter 4. Just turn back a little bit. Matthew chapter 4 um, in verse 1 to 2. Uh, before, this is now quite a bit before this story took place. Matthew chapter 4, 1 says this, then Jesus, led by the Spirit, went into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Yeah, of course he was. How, how, how about you right now? If that's you, could you say, I would be hungry too? Like I'm telling you, I'm hungry and I'm 10 days in. Jesus, yeah, he was hungry. And in that time, he still stood strong. Here's what I see, is that Jesus was saying to the disciples, don't wait until times get difficult and stretch you in your faith and then try to grow your faith. Develop your faith first. Get that formation done so we're not living with formula. So I'm so, so cautious. I don't want to tell you, you, again, here's a rule. We're all fasting now. No, no. This is between you and God. I'm not going to give you any credit. I don't expect you to give me any credit either. In the same way, I'm not saying, hey, fast quickly because then whoo, we're going into great things. And if we do this part right, we'll get that part right. It's not a formula. This is formational. We want to be the people of faith that God has called us to be. So let's get ready now with longer faith. God's not saying you got a little faith that's too shallow. He's just saying your faith is too short. So when we fast, we grow our faith. For some, this whole time you've just been thinking, I can't do that. I need food. I need food. I need food. And it could be that some, you have a medical reason you need food. If you're pregnant at home, please don't fast. If you've got an issue with food, a mental struggle that you have with always constantly trying to diet in a certain way, and you're like, oh, I'll use God and this idea he had to help me lose my weight. Don't, don't fast food, fast something different. But but for all of us, as we're saying, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. God's saying, yeah, you can. You can develop and you can grow your faith and it's going to form longer term faith. And so Jesus notes in his disciples, they can't walk in the freedom they wanted to because they just hadn't formed faith that could see them through. Maybe this applies in your life. I know it's applied in mine at times where I look at a problem and it just seems impossible. And here Jesus is saying those impossible problems become very possible if you have a faith that is formed. Can I give you number three? Here we go. Number three, uh, fasting is not about getting God's attention. It's about getting my attention. I'm telling you, this is not the case that God's just too busy for you. And uh, he's somehow spiteful of the fact that you're enjoying food. <laughs> and so you're trying to pray and he's like, no, no, you just had a chocolate brownie. I'm not answering that prayer. And then somehow, because you're hungry, God goes, wow, they've proven themselves to me. Now I will give them my attention. No, no, no. Fasting is actually about getting my attention. I become gravely aware of how much time and effort I give to thinking about other things. And even like what it said in Matthew, just worrying about my life. And if I were to give even a portion of that, just to stopping, being grateful, hearing from Jesus, softening my heart to him, being in his word, being responsive. I think there's a, just a new level of power to be found. Fasting is not about getting God's attention. Here's what it does. It gets my attention. And I'm telling you, the first few days of fasting, for me, all I'm thinking about is the food that I'm not eating. And, and, and if I stop there, I go, well, I guess I did something, you know. I accomplished it. 
But when I begin to push through, I find myself, my, my thoughts are no longer on what I don't get. My thoughts are on what I am receiving from God. I'm going, wow, all this time that I didn't feel like I had, I, I am able to invest it and to give it and to focus in on receiving from God. Fasting is not about getting God's attention. We already have God's attention. The, the Bible says his eyes are already on us. It says his ear is already turned towards us. It says that he's not too, too weak, that he can't stoop down and make us great. God, God is all about you. And so maybe from time to time, you need to, like me, just say, well, it's not all about me. God's already made it all about me. I don't have to do the same. Check out what it says in the, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. I told you there's lots of scripture today. Acts chapter 13 and uh, verse 3. Paul and, uh, and Mark, check this out. Uh, John also called Mark now in the church of Antioch. There was a prophet and a teacher. His name is Barnabas. Simon uh, called Niger. Lucius of Cyrene. Manian who had been brought up from Herod the, Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit... Uh, spoke to them, said, set apart Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and they sent them off. Guess what was happening? It wasn't that they, got, uh, they were getting God's attention. God was getting their attention. God had somebody to send out, Paul and Barnabas. And if God had not done that, guess what? Paul is the one who brought the message of the gospel outside of a small enclosed uh, group of people in a Jewish culture. He was the, the missionary to the Gentiles. If you and I fall within that people group, well, thank God that someone like Saul and Barnabas would take time to fast and to hear what the Holy Spirit was saying. Fasting is about getting my attention, not getting God's attention. One more verse on that, the book of Ezra chapter eight. Ezra chapter eight, all over the Bible today. Ezra chapter eight. Ezra comes right before Nehemiah. And we're going to verse 21. Look at this. It says, And there by the canal I proclaimed a fast, so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and for our children with all our possessions. Uh, I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from the enemies on the road because he, uh, we had told the king the gracious hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him. So his great anger is against those who forsake him. So we fasted. We petitioned our God about this and he answered our prayer. Here's what Ezra is saying. Not that we fasted and we got God's attention. We're like, hey, it's us down here. We're super hungry. We need you. It was that he was saying, God is on the side of those who look to him. So we better actually look to him. We better actually give him our focus. So number one, fasting is not about dieting, it's about dying to self. Number two, fasting is not a formula, it's formation. Number three, fasting is not about getting God's attention, it's about getting my attention. And number four, finally I want to say this, fasting is not about hardness. Fasting is about softness. Now follow with me. It's not about pushing yourself to a level of difficulty so you can say, look what I've done. Fasting is about softening my own heart. Look what it says in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 58. See, for some, when we're doing without what we want, trying to pursue the thing we need, we feel like it gives us license to be a person that nobody can stand being around. But look what it says in Isaiah 58. It says, uh, uh, verse 3, let's go to verse 3. He says, or why have we fasted, they say, and you've not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of fasting, you just do as you please. You exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and it ends in strife. That was a person who was fasting coffee right there. And it ends in striking each other with wicked fists. You can't fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I've chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only a day for bowing your head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is this what you call a fast, a day acceptable to God? He said, is not this the kind of fast I've chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke. See, what God is calling us to is not a hard task. It's not difficulty. It's not 
proving that we can do something. He's saying, what I'm calling you to is a softer heart. So as we talk about fasting today, for some, you're, you're that extreme person and it feels like every group of friends has one of those. You're going, to, if a little bit of fasting is good, then a lot's better. If a little bit of, of difficulty is good, then I'm gonna push myself to the outer limits and prove myself to God. I'm gonna do something hard just because it's hard. What God is calling for you is not hardness, but softness. That while you fast, it wouldn't be this exterior legalistic act. It would be a softening of your heart towards the things that, that stir the heart of God. He goes, I'm looking for you in the midst of saying no to something to open up your eyes, your heart, your hands, your life, your time, and your resource to seeing the world around you the way I see it. I wanna, I wanna see you engaging in, in, in the promotion of people who are, are, are living in oppression, live in a way of justice. And how do we do that? By reminding people of who Jesus is because he's the one who breaks every yoke. How do we break injustice in our world? It's not just by advocating for more justice. How we break injustice is by presenting Jesus to the world, the one who sets the captives free. I wanna close with this thought. I already gave you four things that fasting is not, four things that fasting is. It's not dieting, it's dying to yourself. It's not formula, it's formation. It's not getting God's attention, it's getting my attention. It's not hardness, it's softness. But I want to close with this one thought. Multiple days into a fast now, I'm hungry. Like for real, I'm hungry for some natural things. Some fried chicken would be awesome right now. But more than that, I'm hungry to see what God has in store for us. I think our world needs revival more than it has in my lifetime. Remember when I was younger, we used to talk about revival and uh, I think we saw revival like uh, longer worship services or louder preaching. We used to talk about revival and it was like bigger events and, and, and better production, but we need a revival, a turning of hearts back to God from everyone in society, from the high to the low, from the near and the far, everyone in society. We need God to move. We need God to stir up our hearts and to move in this land. And so I wanna ask you, would you engage with me, even this week in prayer. As you know, we're in 21 days of prayer. Every day we're on IG Live at noon praying together and uh, we're calling everyone to take a specific time in this early part of the year to dedicate to prayer. I wanna encourage you, include some fasting in that prayer. And it can be personal. You don't need to, to broadcast it. You don't need to Instagram all the meals you're not having. Just between you and God, living in softness before him, allowing God to get your attention, allowing him to form you and actually dying to self to receive from him the things he wants to say. I wanna pray with you right now and then we're actually gonna go back into worship. And as we do, why don't we make this the dedication of our hearts? God, I'm gonna give you the first, the best of my year. I'm gonna give you the best of my attention and I wanna grow in you. Can we pray, Jesus? I thank you right now. I thank you, God, that, that you have a desire to communicate with us, to speak to my heart. And I pray and I humble myself again and collectively we're humbled to receive from you focus, direction, calling, purpose, breakthrough, power, freedom. And we believe what you say. You say, well, well it's because we have little faith that we don't experience some of those things. We have short-term faith. Would you deepen our faith as you soften our hearts? If you're watching right now and you don't know Jesus, I wanna pray a simple prayer with you and you can receive a relationship with Jesus right now. It's just something like this. Jesus, I give you my life. I repent for my own sin. I want all that you have for me. And right here and now, you are now in relationship with Jesus and the Bible promises that that relationship goes throughout all eternity. I'm so excited for you. It's the best decision that you could ever make. And even right now in the chat, there's an opportunity to let us know you prayed that prayer. We wanna walk out the next steps with you. As we turn our attention back to worship, I'm excited for what God's speaking to you. I'm excited for what he's speaking to me. And collectively, as we soften our hearts before him, I'm so anticipatory and, and, and eager to see what he wants to do in Vivid Church, in our cities, and in our nation. Let's worship God together. Worthy of
every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Sing Jesus your